Everything you need is already inside of you. The world would not be what it is without you. When we begin to create change within us, we begin to create change in the world around us. Your journey to becoming your best self as the whole person starts right now. Hello and welcome to the Become Your Best podcast and webinar series. My name is Lauren Sweeney. I'm the vice president here at Rise Up For You, and I'm your host today. We are excited that you have joined us to elevate yourself as an entrepreneur, as a leader. Maybe you want, are here to look for more confidence, better public speaking, more personal branding, or emotional intelligence. Make sure that you stay till the end because we want to give you a free gift as well. Let's start by inviting our guest Cassandra on today. She's from Orange County, California, although she's currently on holiday and working in Germany this week. So fantastic. We definitely have an international audience listening to our show today. She's a thought leader, a best-selling author, and sought-after on-camera personality and speaker in the mindfulness and personal development world. Now you know why we brought her on the show. She's also the host of the popular spiritual podcast, Divine Downloads, and you may have seen her on ABC's The Taste with Anthony Bourdain as the happy, healthy living guru, or in her work with Shape Magazine, Eating Well, Huffington Post, Teen Vogue, Thrive, Fabletics, ooh, can you get me some hookup on those, Lululemon, Soul Cycle, and many more. She's been called an award-winning thought leader and intuitive coach in Forbes and a spiritual leader by Well Plus Good. Cassandra helps people all over the world learn the process for bringing their desires into everyday reality. And we're excited to have her on our show today because we know no matter what role we play in life, it takes that stillness. It takes that sitting down for a moment and figuring out what does our intuition really say? So Cassandra, welcome to our show. Yay. Thank you so much for having me, Lauren. Absolutely. We're excited and we're, I can already feel your energy coming through the screen. <laughs> we're excited to, to have this conversation. What are some major things that you're passionate about right now? Even if people listening are entrepreneurs, maybe they're a leader, maybe they're a CEO, maybe they're a stay-at-home parent. What are things that are on your heart that you're like, oh, I just want you to know? <laughs> oh my God, I love this question. <laughs> I love this question. Um, actually, right now, I am thinking about creativity. I have been on this, and, and this ties in with entrepreneurs. It ties in, so I recently just got married, went on my honeymoon like in June, so literally just a month ago. And on my honeymoon, I was reflecting on how certain parts, certain aspects of my business, and I have, you know, a few different facets of my business, but there were certain aspects of my business that were kind of feeling a little flat. And as someone that has created like a really purpose-filled business, that kind of freaked me out. <laughs> and I was like, oh no, like what's wrong? Why don't I have that loving feeling anymore? And I started reflecting and what I realized was that I think no, no matter who you are, no matter what you do, but I think especially if we have entrepreneurs listening, um, creativity is the lifeblood. Your creativity is, I think, your lifeblood when it comes to not only innovating um, your business and keeping your business fresh and exciting, but also it's your lifeblood when it comes to your just like simple joys and excitement, um, which is so important. And so I've really been passionate about this idea of making sure that more of us are making space for creativity. Because I think what happens is we get into that, we get, I mean, my, my book that we'll probably talk about manifesting through meditation or, you know, a lot of the work I do with uh, people all over the world is called Divinely Design Your Life. And so it's inherit inherently thinking of your whole life as like a creative process right? Thinking of your whole life as this like blank slate and you get to draw whatever picture you want on it, create whatever you want to create. Um, but then realizing that so many of us, and I work with a lot of entrepreneurs as well, and we create businesses and then forget kind of why we created them, 
right? For that freedom and that flexibility and that ability to be inventive and that ability to try new things. Um, and so, yeah, that's just been something that I've been really just dancing with and, and taking more time for myself to really have kind of creative play dates and brainstorming and, you know, have moments where I can think of all different ideas and not necessarily have to put so much pressure on them and kind of let the ones that want to move on naturally like rise to the top and then take those aligned actions. Um, but I just think creativity is just so important for entrepreneurs. And I don't know, is that something that resonates with you, Lauren? Definitely. It's that allowing ourselves that space to recharge and then to come up with things to move us forward. And I also hear that it's seeing which which ideas, especially as an entrepreneur, or let's say I'm leading a team, which things do I want to continue doing? I know a lot of times we just do things because they're on our docket, they're on our schedule. We said yes to them a million years ago. <laughs> Now we're not aligned with them anymore. So I hear a few things. It's that intentional pause. Is that what you did, Cassandra, when you said, you know, you just got married, congratulations. Thanks. And you were sort of realigning your values and, and your work. How did you, how did you do that? So you had the self-awareness. We talk a lot about emotional intelligence. Yeah. And so then I, what'd you do? Yeah. So I think the first part was having the self-awareness to realize that like something wasn't working. And, and if only just because of the feeling that it wasn't bringing me the joy that I know that it can do. Um, and then to really assess the situation. So one of my, one of my favorite things to tell my clients is that I think a lot of this self growth um, process is about being able to be really honest with yourself. Um, so I was really honest with myself about, all right, Cass, like, I had loaded my schedule, like, nobody's business. So I was literally doing, you know, probably as much as like three normal humans would do. And, and how was I surprised that I was burned out by this, right? How was I surprised that there wasn't that time for creativity? And again, like what you said, when the first step before, I mean, I did, I took the longest break away from my business I ever did for my, my wedding and honeymoon. And I took it fully off. I put it up and out of office. My assistant was kind of like managing things, but nothing. Um, like obviously right now I'm traveling. I travel a lot and I n hardly ever cancel things when I travel. Um, but for that, I gave myself a full like two and a half, three weeks completely off, which was really nice. But before I even did that, and I understand that that's not always what someone's able to do. But before I did that, I, I did what you brought up is I actually wrote down all of the things that I was doing, like all of the like kind of like look like a spider web <laughs> of like all these different like, okay, so you're doing my you're doing your podcast, I'm writing a book right now. I have my clients, I have a mastermind, I have a couple digital programs. Um, you know, all the little, I do other people's podcast interviews, you know, all these different things, um, live events. And I wrote all of them down. And then I started also writing down, this was actually really um, interesting for me, writing down also kind of like the minutia that I did. So like the, the kind of like random back end stuff that maybe I do on, on the computer, like, oh, you uploaded this thing or you did that or whatever, all for the business. But I just wrote it all down. So like everything was accounted for. <laughs> and then I went through it and I really looked at, okay, what of this is still exciting me? And what of this, it can take a pause for a bit. And, um, you know, and then what needs to be delegated or what just needs to be like scrapped, you know, what do we need to pull back on? And, and so it's like this delicate balance of like creating this space and then simultaneously getting really clear on your priorities. So for me, it was a process of really looking at like, what are those things that are no longer aligned? 
what, and, and at first it was just that feeling like what, when I look at it feels like a, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, a blah. and like, what are the things I look at? And I'm like, yeah, more of that. Um, and then it was also that assessment of really getting honest with myself of in this season of my life, what, what do I want my focus to be? Right. What do I want to aim my arrow at? And what are the things that now I want to pull back on? Right. Or what are the things that rather, you know, I want to get more specific about what I'm doing and can I allocate my time more in that way? Um, and yeah, I took, like I said, I took a couple weeks off, like, do, you know, clients, calls, like anything like that, which I think was really nice to just get that breathing room, get that breathing room um, to just be with myself. I've had a business for like 10 years and I've never taken that long off. And to have that breathing room, it really allows you to, I guess, kind of come back again, like come back. Once you have that space, you kind of come back with these new ideas and you have that that space for creativity and you have that space also to check in with yourself right now because so much of, you know, what what you mentioned before is like we can do so many things reflexively. We do so many things because we're like, oh, I should do that. or I've always done that. So why would I not do that? (laughs) Right. And then we just get in the, the hamster wheel of it. And so taking that space away from it where, you know, I also took like a week or plus off Instagram right? So I literally was like, just detached. Um, It really helped me really connect to what I wanted to step back into. So I highly recommend it. I love that. What do you recommend in terms of people really creating things that they're looking for? We've talked about rest, being productive, which is something I definitely struggle (laughs) with, but I'm working on it. We've talked about manifesting, and that's a lot of what you do as an entrepreneur for your clients as well. So where does someone begin that process? Yeah. So I have my little book with me, a little manifesting through meditation. Um, So the manifesting process that I write about in the book is simple four steps. Um, And so I start off with the first step is remembering who you are. Um, so for me, that's, that's whatever higher power you believe in, whatever divine you believe in, remembering that like you come from that or you are made of that. So the same endless possibilities, the same potential, the same abundance, the same love, all of that creation energy is in you. And when we start from that foundation of connecting, um, whether it's God, the universe, source, Mother Nature, I don't care what you call it, <laughs> but that 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 for you, whatever that is for you is important because it reminds you that you're so much more than this 3D body. You're so much more than the limitations and the fears and what everybody's going to tell you or what no one's done that before or your parents don't think it's possible. You are at your very essence, like pure infinite creation energy. And then once you get clear on that, the second step is checking in like what we talked about before, checking in with what your soul really desires, getting into your heart zone and saying, okay, what is my heart really craving to create right now? Not what do I see some other people have on Instagram that might be cool to have or not what I my mom wants me to be or my dad or what my bo- boyfriend wants me, who, you know, whatever. It's like getting down to that really quiet truth inside of yourself of what do I feel called to create in this life of mine. And then when we get clear on that, then the third step is my favorite step and probably my client's least favorite step, which is clearing the fears. Is really I, I, an easy exercise I would um, give to listeners to, to do right now if they feel called um, is to write out those heart-centered desires, those things you want to create in your life, in your business, in your relationships, in your wellness, 
write them out as if they're already there. And then below them, write out all the thoughts that come up in your head. And this is where you get to be really honest again. (laughs) All the thoughts that come up in your head after that, that tell you that you can't have that, or it's not likely, or how is that going to happen? Or you're not good enough, or you're not smart enough, or you don't know enough people, or whatever it is, all of those BS thoughts that we all have, right? Write them all out and get that fear inventory down because all of those beliefs uh, that you have tangled up in there, that's what's actually blocking you from fully embodying that. That's what's blocking you from stepping into that frequency of whatever you're creating, from calling it into your life or from listening to the aligned intuitive action that wants to move through you. And so once we can see that, then that gives us some some juicy stuff to work with. And there's all different kinds of modalities. I have a bunch of different meditations. Um, I go through tapping and a couple other exercises as well um, in the book or in my courses. There's once you see the fears, now they're now they're not in the subconscious anymore. Now that they now they're in your conscious. So now you can do whatever ways you want to, to release them. And whether that is doing, you know, EFT, whether I have a thing I do called butterfly, um, whether it's doing a releasing ceremony where you, you know, throw rocks into the ocean, right? Whether it's you just going down fear by fear and saying, I choose to not believe this anymore. And this is what I want to believe instead. And here's the Here's the story I was telling myself about that fear. And, you know, as I'm writing it out now, I can see that, you know, I collected some evidence, but it's not really true. It's not really true. Um, And then your fourth step is really embodying it, is living as if, living as if, you know, you are aligning your vibration and your energy and how you show up in every aspect of your day as that person who has or is doing the thing that you're ready to call in. So that's my spark notes version of it. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And they can definitely check out the book for sure. And uh, it's at Amazon, all, everywhere books are sold. Yes. There's this idea too, that, you know, as our confidence grows, our c- clarity grows. And that's a lot of work that we love to do with our clients. And so if you're listening and you don't have that clarity, that's okay. Work through the steps that Cassandra just gave us. The clarity is going to come. You don't have to have it figured out and just simply noticing like, oh, I'm feeling anxious today. Oh, uh, absolutely. And honestly, even having, even if you don't have the clarity of specifically like what you want to do or what business you want to create. We all have the clarity of how we want to feel, right? And so we may not know, oh, I want to launch this business or I want to go into that career or I want to live in this town or whatever it is, right? But we all know that we want to feel happy. We want to feel invigorated. We want to like be excited for life, right? That's kind of like a general human thing. So you can also use that as your starting point, right? You can actually use that as like a general manifestation of, hey, I don't know exactly what the business is or the career is or the guy is or the girl is or whatever it is, right? But I know how I want it to feel. I know I want to feel amazing. I know I want to feel like I'm making an impact. I know I want to feel like I'm excited to wake up every morning, right? And so you can also just start there, right? Mm -hmm. Having a career that makes you feel that way. And then Ask yourself, what are all the fears and what are all the negative beliefs that come up just from the idea of you having some kind of career that makes you really happy? Because there'll be a lot for you to work with there too. And then just as you said, it's so true. Then naturally, if you start from that general and you just start working through some of the fears and you just start moving through that, you start taking, Mm -hmm. you know, the aligned actions that, you know, start occurring to you it will naturally, you know, the path will reveal itself for sure. Absolutely. So if people want to find you, they can go to your website. It's just your first and last name.com. So Cassandra is C-A-S-S-A-N-D-R-A. And her last name is B-O-D-Z-A-K.com. Yep. 
And I'm well, like we, that on all the social platforms too. So super easy. <laughs> I love it. Well, we love to ask kind of a wrap up question, Cassandra, and that is what does rise up for you mean to you? Uh, it's so funny because I actually was listening to this song that I love. It's called Rise Up today. <laughs> and for me, it's rise up for you is rising up for your potential and the gift that you're here to give the world and kind of elevating yourself over, you know, all that kind of muck that we were just talking about so that you get to share your gifts with the world. That's what I think about. Oh, I love that. Well, thank you so much for being on our show today. And thank you for the work you're doing. Oh, thank you so much. It was an honor. Oh, I love that. Amazing. Well, thank you for listening to our show today and for showing up for yourselves to become your best. We would love to give you the gift, our listeners, of a free coaching call. Go to riseupforyou.com slash coaching and be sure to redeem your gift today. Until the next time I listen, you listen or see me, I hope that you rise up for you.